Even though remote differential compression was first introduced in Windows Server 2003 R2 as a means to reduce the bandwidth required for replicating data, ever since Windows Vista was released, I always seem to get asked about what it is. So rather than try and avoid the question or to try and shove it inside another video somewhere, I decided that we'd have a brief talk about it now so you guys are aware of what it does and what it is. Now, like I said, Remote Differential Compression came out with Windows Server 2003 R2. It then made its way into Windows Vista and now into Windows 7. So what is it? Why does it impact you and why should you even care? Well, you probably should care since Remote Differential Compression is a little bit of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can speed up copying data from a remote location but on the other hand, it can also slow down copying data from a remote location. That's right, you heard me correctly. Sometimes it can speed up copying files, other times it can slow it down. So in this short video on remote differential compression, we're going to talk about what remote differential compression really does, and then you can decide whether you want to use it or not. Now, the first thing I will mention that Remote Differential Compression, or RDC, as I'm going to refer to it from now on, I don't know if that actually is an acronym for Remote Differential Compression, but RDC sounds pretty good to me, so we'll call it that. RDC is turned on by default with Windows 7, so if you do plan on using it, you don't need to touch anything. In fact, you can turn this video off and you'll be using it. Now, if you do want to turn it off, however, well, that's a different story. We're going to show you where to find that feature later in this video. So the real point of RDC is to only transmit the differences in data that needs to be copied. Now, I will clarify this, that it doesn't just mean physical files. Although for the purposes of this video, we'll be concentrating on file-to-file -file transfers. Or to put it simply, when you want to take a file from this server and you want to copy it over the network to this server. Now, in many cases, when we attempt this copy from, we'll call it server A, over to server B. On server B, you may already have a copy of the file, or you might have a lot of it. So say for argument's sake that over on server A here, we've got a, a Word document file, and it's two megabytes in size. And over on server B, we've got an early copy of this document, and we'll say we had it yesterday before it was updated, and it's at 1.5 megabytes in size. So the whole idea with remote differential compression is why go and transfer the whole entire 2 megabytes over to this server, when all we really need to transfer is the difference, which is roughly 500k. Well, that's the theory anyway. And RDC does obviously have some overhead, as it does need to take time to compute what the difference is between this file and this file before it can transfer it. And of course, that's going to take some time. Now, I'm not going to go into the mathematics used to compute these differences. And if you are interested in getting something to make you fall asleep, go ahead off to Microsoft's website, do a search for remote differential compression, and you're going to find some really interesting white papers, and, and it's going to cover all the maths on RDC. So even though it takes longer to start the initial transfer of data, after all, first, both the files at our remote end over here, and our sending end, or we'll call it our local end, over here, these files need to be compared. That's the first thing that needs to happen. We need to check both files at both ends. That way RDC knows what the differences are. Obviously, if this copy process is happening over a slow WAN link, which of course is more expensive to run than a local LAN connection, you're likely to realize both a performance increase in the overall transfer time and a monetary saving as well, since the amount of data you need to transfer is likely to be lower. So when a file is copied and transferred using RDC, the differences between the two files, so in other words, our 500K here, is compressed before being sent, and that can drastically alter the speed of the transfer, of course, depending 
on what sort of files been transferred. So if the files say a large text file, for example, let's say over here we've got a one megabyte text file, that's a TXT there, then it's going to compress really well and RDC is likely to offer quite a good performance increase. However, if the file's one that's heavily compressed to begin with, such as an image file like a JPEG image for argument's sake, then you're really not going to see any difference, especially if the file's a small one, because this can cause RDC to take longer than it would just to copy the whole file. So since the main point of RDC is to copy differences in files to save bandwidth and to make the transfers quicker, the main area where it really offers a benefit is in remote networks that have limited bandwidth. Now it's also worth pointing out that if we're going to copy a file from server A over here to server B and we've got a file say a 5 meg file here and it's a brand new file and it doesn't exist over on server B, no form of that file exists on server B, then RDC is really not going to offer you any benefit since the difference between the file on server A and the file on server B is the whole file. So obviously that whole file would need to be copied in that scenario. Now RDC also by default only works on files that are 64 kilobytes or larger. So if you're transferring thousands of really, really small text files for argument's sake, then RDC is going to offer you pretty much no benefit. But when you have large compressible files that you need to transfer, RDC will save you a fair bit of bandwidth and time, of course, since the overall transfer should be quicker as there's less data to copy. All right, well, let's go and take a quick look at where we can turn RDC on or off. So on our Windows 7 desktop here, we are going to click Start and we're going to fire up the control panel. We'll then choose the Programs link. And up here in the middle, we're going to choose to turn Windows features on or off. Right, right here in the middle, we can see we've got an option here for remote differential compression, which is currently enabled. So to turn it off, we'd simply uncheck the box and click OK. Now, this will take probably about 30 seconds or so to turn off completely. So be prepared to wait a short while for Windows 7 to do its thing. So, to identify whether RDC is better left turned on or switched off really comes down to your own situation. Now, if you're a home user that copies files back and forth from one computer to another and it's a lot of small image files, you'll probably find that if you crunch the numbers, RDC is going to offer you very little or no benefit and it may even be faster with it turned off. But let's say that you copy large files such as virtual hard disk files or video files back and forth, especially over WAN links, then RDC should indeed make things much quicker. So all I can suggest is that if you care about finding out more about RDC on your system, do a few tests of your own, copy a few files back and forth with it turned on, do the same with it turned off, and whatever differences you record is going to tell you whether RDC is helping or hindering your system. Now, if you're at all unsure about whether you should turn it off or leave it on, I'd recommend you just leave it on, since in most cases, home users of Windows 7 or even corporate users pretty much mostly access data on their local network, and they probably won't notice any difference either way. But indirectly, you'll probably be enjoying the speed increase without even realising it. So we hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'd like to thank you for watching.